So let us look now at some Turing examples. I'm going to give you a few languages and we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you how do I recognize that language using a Turing machine. So we'll start with a very easy one where I give you a regular expression and now I show you the Turing machine that recognizes it. So as you can see there's a single accept state and as a convention um, if there is no edge we'll just assume it's going to the outgoing edge sorry to the reject edge reject state um, so implicitly there would be for all the non-expecting inputs you would expect it to go to a single rejecting sync state so as we talked about before T Turing machines have to be deterministic, so you cannot have two outgoing edges with the same input to different uh, states. And you have a single accept state, so this is all correct. So let's try to understand what's going on here. What we want to rec uh, recognize is language L. So we want to accept one zero and then zero more ones, finally another zero. So in a transition, we say that we read a zero, and what we do after that is we write something. We're, in this case, we're writing an X, as you can see here. Um, so we're writing an X, replacing the zero by an X, and then we're going to read once in state B. So in state B, whenever you read one, you convert, you rewrite the one into a Y, and you move right. So what we're writing it really doesn't matter as long as we do this the way it's being done so move one to the right so let's disregard what is being written because it, it really has no effect in the in the end result it's just so we can observe uh, what's going on better uh, so let's let's disregard this this part of the transition so what are we doing we read the zero and we move to the right so that's exactly how a, a dfa would work right and then if you read one, you would go to the reject state, right? Then what do you do? You do in, you're in B, you read one, and whenever you read one, you advance to the right. So you're advancing in your memory to the right. Eventually you're done, and you read a one, a zero, sorry. And if you read zero, you go to the final state, right? So you, you just want to read this final zero. You're in C. How do you know you're done? Well, after that, you have to have the blank space which means the end of the input. I mean, you can still write to the right, but in this case, because we just read from left to right, as soon as we find zero, and then we find nothing else, that means that the string ended with zero, and therefore we are ready to accept. So, if you understand this, we can draw a state showing you what's gonna happen. So, at initials, initially we are in state S, and this is our memory. And the underlined uh, cursor here uh, with the underline zero is just saying that the cursor is currently at position at this position. So it's ready to read zero. If we read zero, we move right one position. So we moved here. Then what we do here, we're going to read uh, with which input are we reading? We're in, in, the input has three ones and one zero. So we're going to evaluate this three times. And whenever we read it, we advance the cursor one to the right, right? Because we're saying here, right. Finally, we get to C. So, fi sorry, finally, we are, we are in B, and we no longer have one. Instead, we have zero. So we are at this stage. Then what we do, if we find zero, we advance to C. In C, what we do, we read the blank space. And because we read the blank space, we can advance to Q accept. And because we reach Q accept, we are ready to uh, accept the input string, which was 0110. So I actually have um, a link in the HTML version of the slides. If you follow this link, simulate, it will open the Turing machine visualization, which is a free website. It doesn't have exactly the same semantics as we are learning, because as you can see, you can actually move past the left hand side so it's unbounded on both sides but for, but for the sake of the examples that i'm giving you um, it is enough to it's more expressive than what we need actually but it's enough for the for the examples i want to show you 
So and we inputted the string 0, 1, 1, 0. What we do, we start in state s, and unfortunately I cannot see it very well, and it, I cannot make it any bigger. Uh, so feel free to um, open it in your web page, in your browser, and then I'm going to start in state s, and I, if I read 0, the only thing I can go is move uh, to state b, that's what we do, now we're in b. We read 1 3 times, 1, 2, 3, and now we are in state b, the only thing we can do is read 0 and advance to C. In C, we read the empty blank, so that means we're at the end of the input, so we can accept it. Okay, so now let's reset and let's um, actually create a string that does not, that gets stuck, so it does not accept, should not accept this string, so in this case it would be um, 1, 0, and I put a 0 in the middle. So let's see what happens. If you do that, then you read the zero, you get to B. B, you read one once, okay? Now I'm still in B and I read one. What do I go do? I go to state C. In state C, the only thing I can do to advance to accept is to read the blank space, but I don't. I have a one here. Because I have a one here, I am stuck. That implicitly, we're saying that we would move to a, a sync state reject. So because of that, the, there's nothing else the machine can do. And as you can see in the cursor, it has a little cross that is saying that we cannot advance any further. And the string, the input string 010110 is rejected by this Turing machine. Okay. So feel free to change in the input whatever string you want and the Turing machine will act accordingly. And will, it will only recognize uh, zero, one star, and then zero. So now let's go back. So we're here in example one. Let's lo look at an example two, which is a bit more interesting. So we want to accept zero to the n, one to the n. So the classic non-regular language. How do we implement this? Here is the pseudocode for how you would implement it. What do you do? If you read zero, then... So now we have to... Uh, do something a bit smarter, right? So if it's just a regular language because we don't need memory and here it becomes a bit more obvious why you need actually memory. So when in a context free grammar, as you know, you need a stack to be able to keep track of how many zeros you read or how many, we, what we learned was a, a series of A's followed by a series of B's, right? What we need to do is we need to use a stack to use it kind of like a counter. We know how many times we've pushed and then we're going to push the, the pop the same number of times we've pushed that allows us to read the same number of A's as the num same number of B's. So that is great. Um, here, now we no longer have a stack. So how would we do that? Um, well, if you can figure that out, that would be awesome. But if you can't, uh, allow me to explain how to do it. Well, one way is we can kind of encode a pseudo programming language that does exactly what a Turing machine would do. So you check if the input is zero, right? So this would be it. Now we kind of need to use the, the, the memory that we have. And we need to record something because we need to know, we need to be able to count somehow. What we are going to do is um, when we're going through the, um, the input known as the tape, so we're going to read a zero and we're going to put a little cross here. And for e each zero, we have to cross out one one. Okay? So if we have... We have the first zero, we cross it out, and then we cross this out. So now we have zero and one. What we need to do, next we cross this out, and we cross that out. If, my, if at any point my string is all crossed out, what we knew, that means that our string was accepted. So when do we know that it was rejected? Well, if we need to cross out zero, and we cannot cross out one, then we run over, right? We are not able to find that one and we should reject the string as well. So intuitively, that's what, what we want to do in this, uh, with this Turing machine. Let me recap that. We, whenever we read a zero, so we start from the beginning of, this, of the tape, we read a zero, and we cross it out, and we seek on the right-hand side until we find the one. If we can find the one, we cross that out, otherwise we reject. When, after we cross out the one, we rewind until we find the first zero. And once we find the zero, we cross that out and we move all the way to the right until we find the one. So eventually, 
the whole string is going to be um, it's going to be crossed out. If that's the case, then we're good to go, and we can accept the string. If at any point uh, any of these operation fails, we should reject the string. So let's see how we can do this. We can do it with four states. So we start, and we are at the left hand, uh, leftmost. We see if there's a zero. If there's a zero, we cross it out. So we write an X, and we move to the right until we move to the right, and now we go to state B. What state B is doing is find me the next zero. So when you are in state zero, what you're going to do is, okay, I'm going to skip all the ones, right? So you want to skip the beginning um, until you find, so when while you find the crossed outs, you are here. Now you need to skip all the way until you find this one. So once you find the one, you cross it out, and then you go to seek one. So seek zero is going backwards, and seek one is going forward. So when you go forward, you have to skip zeros until you find the one. But you might find the Y, so you need to skip zeros and ones. So that's why you have this loop here. Um, and then once you find the X, you move right and go back to the beginning. Okay, so perhaps visually, let's see this visually. Uh, okay, so we start here. Where do we go first? We try to find uh, zero. So the, the diagram is gonna work like this. Sorry, like this and then eventually like this. Okay, so let's see. This is the part where we're crossing out. So you go from s B to C and then S. So in B, we start, we read the first zero, and then we have to go and find, in B, we do a transition, so we read the zero, and then we move to C until we find, um, here we're crossing out the first zero. Once we do that, we move, actually it's better if we uh, just simulate it. Let's see how, how that works. Okay, so this is the example where we want to recognize the same number of zeros, same number of ones. So we start in state S. What we do when we find uh, state S is we, when we read zero, we move to B and we write out an X here. Okay, so now we're in B. What that means is that now we're, we want to find the one. But before we find the one, we'll find, we're going to find zeros and Y's. So that's, therefore, we need to skip zeros and Y's. So let's do that. In this case, there's only one zero. So B is skipping zeros and Y's. Zero, okay, so one is no longer Y, so we're done. If we find the one, we are ready to advance to C where we go backwards. So let's see. Okay, so now we're in C. What we need to do in C is we need to uh, skip all the zeros until we find the, the following X, right? Because we need to skip rewinds. So C, what is C doing is rewinding. So eventually you find the X, we cross this out. So we're in C. Now in C, what we need to find is the first zero to the right. So what C is gonna do, once it finds an X, it moves one step to the right. Now we're in zero, we're back to the beginning. Cross out the zero, seek the next one, cross that out, go back. Now everything is clear and skip it all the way in. So let's see zero, find the one, cross that out, go back. Now we are at back at the beginning. If at the beginning, if, if at the beginning we find Y's, that means that everything is blanked out. So we advance all the way until we find the empty space. And once we find the empty space, we accept it. And now let's change the input and add one more zero then then wise. So let's load the machine. Okay. What do we do? We're going to cross out this and this. Second is going to cross out that and that. And then once we write the, we get back to this zero, we won't be able to cross it out. So it will reject. So let's see. We start, cross out the first, move all the way to the one. Now we advance to C, cross it out, move back. So rewind, find X. Now move right and write Okay, so now we're back to the beginning. Cross that out, find the one. Okay, found the one, cross that out, go back, 
rewind until you find an X. Find an X, you're ready. Cross that out, go back to zero. Re cross out the zero. Now I'm searching for a one. Eventually I'm in B. I'm searching for a one and I cannot find it because I, I hit the blank space. Therefore, the string is rejected. Okay, so this is why it's failing. And what you see here, this is a configuration that is showing you from the state, what is the next state? Uh, sorry, what is the tape, the, the memory? And since you have that, you have everything to know how to advance because the Turing machine is deterministic, right? So from here, we can just, by knowing where we are and which state we are, we can advance. This is an example of accepting uh, 0011. Finally, let's try to do a z find all A's, then find all B's, uh, and number of C's. They're all the same. So what can we do? It's going to be similar. We're going to start by, by marking um, to the right until we either read an A. So once we read an A, we mark that out, and we now need to jump to step A. What do we do? We need to find the next B move all the way to the right until you find the next C, cross out the C, and then go all the way back to A. So if you are able to do this example, you will be able to do this, hopefully. The basic idea is that you cross out the A's, search for the next B, cross that out, search for the way for C, and then rewind all the way back to A's and start over. All right, so let's see it back. In the start, you skip until you find you read an A and once you find it you go to A where you cross that out otherwise you read blank and you're done because it could, could be the even the empty string so if you read the A's you are you just marked an A so now you're finding B's so you skip everything until you read the B and then you mark it and you go to B's in B's you already marked out the B so you want to search for a C you find the C you go to C's in the C's, what you're doing is you're rewinding all the way back to A's. Once you rewind, you skip everything to the right until you hit the end of the string. Once you hit the end of the, the, end of the string, you rewind everything back to the beginning, which is go to rewind. In rewind, you skip everything to the left until you reach the blank state. So that means rewind the whole string. You reach the blank state, that means you've reached the beginning of the string, and now you can move back to start. So let's see how that plays out. Now you have all this. Now it's going to accept two A's, two B's, and two C's. Cross out first A, search for B's, find B, move to B, find C, found C. Now uh, cross out. Now we need to go back and rewind. Now we're in state R. What state R is going to do is going to rewind all the way back to the beginning. Rewind all the way back to the beginning. So it, it finds the null. Now we're in the null. Now let's jump back to the beginning. Okay, rewind. Now we're back to the beginning. What do we do now? We skip all the X's until we find an A. Found an A. Cross that out. Move to A. Found an A. Search for B. Found the B, cross that out, go to C, skip X's. Okay, now in C, do the same thing. Found empty, move to rewind. Rewind goes back to the beginning. Okay, back to the beginning, go back to start. Start. If you find X's, skip all the way. Okay, now if everything is X, you've eventually reached the end of the memory end of the tape, sorry, you find the end of the tape, you are ready to accept. So you're done. So now let's in, add an error. Let's put uh, A, B, and just two C's, or maybe we put a C here. Okay, so that's the machine. You see that this C should actually be here. So these two are flipped. Let's see how this advances. First cross out the first A, search for B's, cross out B's, search for C's, cross out... Oh, you're already done. 
because here you actually get stuck in C because in C you only want to find either C's or X's but because there's a B you already get stuck so this one actually uh, gets stuck very easily and therefore this string is rejected okay so now let's go back Okay, so in the next video, we're going to talk about Turing machines formally.